Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. In a world where the super rich... You're looking at well into millions. ...need to release quick cash from their luxury items... It's a fellow who's got a railway. ...prestige pawnbrokers... I can get some big money for you. ...come to the rescue. I'm in the business of making money, and it doesn't matter if it's cars, boats, antiques, whatever it is, I want it. Three, four... ...with branches in well-to-do Surrey... <gasps> ..another happy customer... ..and London's historic jewellery district... Hello! ..they deal with international assets... Absolutely amazing. And top shelf price tags. Are you looking at 45,000? Oh my God. This time. Yeah, I'm loving it now. A need for speed. She does turn nicely, doesn't she? Turns on a sixpence. Heavyweight autographs. This is the beast. A beast it is, isn't it? And that is incredible. And a giant gem. I could see in his face he was having it. Welcome to the world of posh porn. Around three million people are now using pawnbrokers in the UK every year. I need a price on these rings, please. OK. Are these items you are looking to sell? Yeah. Dealing in everything from the sublime... You've got in excess of £300,000 worth of jewellery. ..to the more unusual... Bloody hell. We don't okay. see that every day. Pawn shop boss James Constantino is used to negotiating and closing big money deals all over the world. Your fella's got a million euros worth of wine. It's really important that we're able to travel around the globe looking at some of these high-end assets. I can get you to £125,000. Wow. When he's off jet-setting, left holding the fort is his right-hand woman, Jo. Six and a half grand he's going to offer us. James says, come and help me at the pawn shop. I cleared up the fact it was P-A-W-N to start with. I'm not going to be able to get rid of it. I don't know anyone that would want that. That's what I said from day one. I had absolutely no idea what I was getting myself into. It's the start of another day at the firm's headquarters in London's Hatton Garden. Joe, come and have a look at this. What is that thing you got on? This is a gillet. Is, is that, that what they're called? Is that what you call it? All I know <laughs> is I was freezing this morning and I thought I need an extra layer and I had this. You look like Clint Eastwood in <laughs> A Fistful of Dollars. <laughs> Cheers. Have a look at this. It's a lovely thing. Look at that. Oh, wow. They're cloudy as contacts and they're, it's based in Ibiza and they're looking to sell for €100,000. Oh, brilliant. But the good thing is that I might have to get out there and have a little look at it. Oh, I don't suppose it would be me going, will it? Well, it'll be you packing me to go, if that's any consolation. <laughs> yeah, I'll pack you off, don't worry about uh, that. Can you imagine me standing off the back there, just sort of swanning around? Actually, with I a can imagine you tripping off and maybe being dragged off by some sort of shark. So be careful. Yeah. Oh, this is you lead the way. The boat belongs to businessman Paul, who lives in Ibiza with his family. I miss the food, I miss going to see Sunderland play football. Yeah, there is some things you miss about the UK, but uh, I ain't moving home just yet. This is one of the best places on the island that we're going to now. I first came here in 1996 uh, to work as a holiday rep, and basically from the minute I landed, uh, I suppose I fell in love with the place. What's that, 20 summers, 19 years? Long time. You get less for murder. Paul went from looking after holiday makers to running his own rental portfolio. This is one of our holiday villas. Places like this, we have all sorts of people. Celebrities, footballers, DJs, you name it, we've had them all stay in places like this. Great view. Morning. The property side of the business does take most of our work, most of our time. However, we were involved in travel as well, driving, VIP services. Usually, if it's been on the island, we've been involved with it somewhere. 
there is one part of the business that involves a little playtime. This is our 2007 Crunchy 41 Endurance, perfect boat for the Med, and as you can see, it's just more fun. On this island, it is party, party, party. This is the perfect party boat. Loads of open deck space, a great fun boat. It's looking good, Abbo. We've had loads of celebs on board the boat. Just recently, we've had Denise Van Houten on board, Idris Elba, whenever he comes over and DJs here in Ibiza Rocks. We've had footballers out on it. And the lovely Rita Ora, the picture that we took on the boat that day was in all the newspapers. Um, it's been seen worldwide. Paul now wants to sell his boat to finance one that's even more impressive. As the island of Ibiza is moving up market, we think we need to move up market with a bigger and better boat. Hopefully bigger boat means uh, bigger fun. This one's on the market at the moment for just over 400,000 euros. Just the sort of spec of boat that we're looking for. I think this boat would be used every single day of the week. With a big international boat sale approaching, Paul is hoping James can make a quick decision. Definitely the winter month is when you have to buy a boat. That's when they're all available in Europe and we need to move quickly. We're going to look for 100,000 euros, approximately 75,000 pounds. It's a bargain price. There's nothing else out there at that sort of money for this sort of boat. Think it's going to be done in time? Probably not. <laughs> Disgusting. Absolutely filthy. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Michael speaking. In London, designer bag expert Claudia has received a second inquiry from the island. I've had an email from um, Andy and Zena, some clients from Ibiza. They've got uh, some designer bags, a Rolex watch and a diamond ring, which looks quite spectacular. Hiya, hey, you all right? All right? Yeah. yeah, come over. Yeah. Come and have a look at what I've got. Oh, wow. <laughs> it looks nice, doesn't it? It does. It looks massive. I know. When I sort of first saw it, I just thought, oh, <laughs> looking at a big wow. one here. <laughs> as long as it looks like this in real life, yeah. I think we've got something. There's a couple of vintage bags in there, so they could be quite expensive. Unless I go out there and actually have a look, you don't know what you're dealing with, really. The collection of luxury items belongs to Andy and Zena, who met in Ibiza. I had me um, little blast, didn't I, really? Yeah. And then the I met the fun police, and that was the end of that. <laughs> then I spoiled everything. <laughs> I wasn't looking for love, but then obviously she's absolutely beautiful, so how could I not fall in love? The couple have now been together for 15 years. My next chapter is my family, my business and my wife. Boom! Oh! Andy's really good to live with. He spends quite a lot of time in the mirror, <laughs> to be quite honest. But um, he's a great dad. He's very charming and that's what attracted me to him. Get him up, get mummy, get mummy! <laughs> Before the children, obviously, we used to go out partying quite a lot. But now we appreciate the daytimes more. To be honest, we, we haven't got the energy to party like we used to, have we? Party out. <laughs> yeah. Andy might be all partied out, but he hasn't lost his appetite for adventure. We're off to uh, the film set. I'm very excited, and it's the movie I'm looking to invest in. A bit of an all-star cast, to be honest, with Billy Zane, um, example. So it's looking like it's going to be a really decent movie, you know? Ah, uh, here we go. Secret location film set. The movie is being made by Andy's long-standing business partner, Colin. How are you, mate? Yeah, good, good. Sorry. How are you, Dad? Things going well, though, eh? No, it's been yeah. good, yeah. I was getting married, that's the main thing. So it's good. It's good. But I would say it's good, wouldn't I? Because I wrote a bloody thing. Nah. <laughs> I want all our cast inside the garage, and we'll just do a rehearsal. I want to raise 10, 12k and put it into the film and really have a decent investment in it. I'm 100% confident this thing's going to work. Go there! It's great that Andy's trying to raise some money for the film. It's about time he put his hand in his pocket for something, isn't it? <laughs> 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 to invest in the film, Andy and Zena have decided to say goodbye to some luxury items. Oh, my word. Can you remember when you bought me this one? That was a treat as well. I got me out of a bit of trouble. I know, he's just um, collecting dust in the wardrobe, though. 
And this one, you didn't really like this one. Well, I don't... A Louis Vuitton. I know, but just because it's Louis Vuitton doesn't mean you have to like it. I'm ready to let go. Zena's not the only one making sacrifices. I've collected the watch over the last few years. Um, I like to treat myself now and again when I've been a good boy. It's more, again, more than now. Yeah, always but, um, treating yourself. What? You are Obviously, a watch man, aren't but you? Yeah, but now, now I'm not. So they're good, they've got to go. They've got to go. And the ring was an investment a couple of years ago. At the time, I think it was 14,000. That's where the money's in this one I'm banking on, hopefully. The ring's amazing, but, you know... Get your eyes off it. I think we're ready to let go. <laughs> but will they be worth the 10,000 needed to invest in the feature film? With the pawnbroking industry having grown 8% in the last five years... Oh, my God. That's incredible. Boss James is always looking for ways to expand. Just got an email here from someone, Joe. It says, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to go about this this way, but I'll be very interested in working for your company. I'm honest, reliable, polite and hard-working and show commitment. We don't really employ those sort of people. No. You he ain't say... fooling no-one, is he? Let's face it. <laughs> I'll tell him there's no vacancies. The Weybridge branch, collectibles expert Lawrence has received an inquiry from Nobility. I've got quite an interesting email just coming in because it's actually caught my attention because it's actually from a lord, so let's see what he's got to offer. It's actually quite an unusual item. It's actually a boxing belt, but it's been signed by at least eight boxers, and looking at them, they're all heavyweight champions. Um, the only ones I can make out is Mike Tyson's there, you've got Ali, Ken Norton, but there's some great signatures on there, so it could be talking a decent amount of money, really. The boxing belt belongs to 70-year-old Lord Tim, who lives in Surrey with his wife, Eve. Phone call! Oh, thanks, though. Any chance for a cup of tea? Not a chance in hell, sunshine. Ah, she's not too bad, really. 48 years. First two weren't bad. I'm known as Lord Tim, and I'm not your stereotypical lord. These are my deeds of title for my Lord of the Manor of Ford that my two sons bought for me ten years ago, August 2006. So it's on all my credit cards and uh, driving licence, and it's great fun. I have a lot of fun with it. Getting a title hasn't really changed him at all, except that we all have to curtsy or bow when we come through the door. Yes. There we are, in 1967, on our wedding day. Indeed. You don't look like that, do you? I... 48 years. What do you think the secret of our longevity together is? Oh, separate wings. Lord Tim made his fortune in pet playtime. We moulded a rubber dog bone and the dog bone sold, so we made a ball and a ring and a tug toy, and we ended up with 22 different rubber items for pets. This being my biggest seller, <coughs> Horace the Hedgehog, and we just outsold the rubber toys by hundreds of thousands. So I sold that on to somebody else and moved here and retired. And then uh, I wondered why I retired, and I wondered what to do, and got involved in rock and roll. Another story. <laughs> Since selling his business, Lord Tim has been involved as a director in a touring theatre production. Yeah, that's, re that's really echoing up here. The double yeah, e a double echo. Different all the bands on me. Okay. My wife and I both love music, old music, 50s, 60s rock and roll. It's a tribute show. We call it the concert they never gave. I play uh, Billy Fiore and Eddie Cochran. And he's from Liverpool. I play, uh, who am I? Roy. Tonight? Orbison. Roy Orbison tonight. And? And uh, Gene Vincent. Gene Vincent. And I'm from New York City. And I'm from New York City. Is that good? Yeah. All right. Six years ago, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. Funny enough, about the time that I took on the rock and roll. 20 minutes, OK, cool. Thanks. And I think that probably helped me to throw myself and my wife Eve into this because if you're hammering about on stage, screaming wild thing, for instance, you're not thinking about what might happen tomorrow. 
and things like that. And it's great, great therapy. I recommend it to anybody. Yeah, we're ready to rock and roll. That's Good. That's all we can ask for. Tonight. Because the shows tour all around the UK, I'm always having to hire minibuses. You know, it's 100 and something pounds a time, never mind fuel and insurance, so it's going to be easier to buy one. To buy a minibus, Lord Tim is looking to sell a prized possession. This is a boxing belt uh, signed by 12 of the biggest names in world boxing. Mike Tyson, Ken Norton, Sugar Ray Leonard, Thomas Hearns, Muhammad Ali, of course, Lennox Lewis, Oscar de la Hoya, the great Joe Frazier. I bought this because it just caught my eye in this very big sports memorabilia shop in uh, Las Vegas. Minimum amount I'd be happy with probably would be £2,500. That's getting my money back. It's now up to Lawrence to come up with a heavyweight figure that could tempt Lord Tim. I've got a couple of bags and some shoes that I'm trying to sell. Second-hand bags and purses are increasingly big business for the pawn shop. Wow, that's beautiful. The bags has grown from strength to strength over the years. It is now fast catching up with the jewellery side of things. It really is a massive part of the business. I can smell something. Not sure if I'm smelling the money. Might be something else. Acquiring the right kind of accessory is down to designer handbag expert, Claudia. I've had an email from a customer who's got this old little vintage purse and uh, it's, it's like a chain mail purse. I've not seen one before like it and uh, it looks really, really pretty. She's sending it in for us to appraise it, see what history it's got, what it's worth, just to find out a bit more about it, really. The purse belongs to dog lover Thomasin. Most of my friends and family do think I'm a bit of dog nutter. I do treat them like little people. They are my babies. We've been coming to Dog Agility for about three years now. <laughs> it's taken us three years to get to that level. <laughs> so this is Evie. She is a rescue dog. And this is Alfred, um, and he's a beagle cross of a spaniel. Alex usually runs Alfred, and I usually run Evie. The dogs have made a massive difference to our lives. Couldn't imagine not having them. I think I come bottom of the pecking order. Most of the time I do prefer the company of animals to, to humans, yes. <laughs> Alfred, Evie and husband Alex share their home in Cheshire with Thomasin's business. Opened the grooming salon about uh, a year ago. Yeah. This was our dining room um, that we didn't really use, apart from the dogs used to stay in here when we were out. It just means we go out for meals more if we're meeting friends. I don't have to cook. It's a good little girl. We have got doggy spa treatments, so I've got um, blueberry face masks. Um, we've got paw scrubs to make their paws really soft and moisturised. Uh, we've got leave-in sort of body conditioners, skin and coat conditioners, ear treatments. It's like a little spa day, silly. You just need to appreciate it. I just like the dogs. I individual personalities are all different, like people really, but they um, don't tend to argue with you like people do. Thomasin now has her eye on another doggy-related business venture. I really want to like design some really nice high-end looking dog collars, the same sort of quality as a designer handbag. We've got loads of ideas for other designs. I've just been saving really hard, but I, I obviously need more money to move it forward. Um, I need money to set up a website. I'm going to have to do um, a dog photo shoot for the website so it looks really high-end. Additional things that I need to pay for that I've not budgeted for, really. In order to raise the cash, she's hoping there's big money in the little purse. Um, so this is the purse. 
I got it from my next door neighbour when I was a little child. Um, I used to go over and visit her. She kept it on a sideboard on the back door and um, I used to sort of pick it up and sort of mess with it as I was leaving and say, oh, can I have this? I really like this. And then one day she just went, yes, just have it. <laughs> um, so I've I had it ever since. I've always wondered if, it, if it's valuable and it, I just, thinking of ways to raise money for the business, I just dug it out and thought I'd find out if, it, if it's worth anything really. If they told me it was worth upwards of £500, I'd be happy. It's now up to bag expert Claudia to find out if it's worth any cash. Every week, Boss James receives over 1,500 inquiries. It's saleable. Personally, I don't see it at 10 grand for loans and goods for sale. I bought it as an investment, but I don't know whether I was drunk at the time when I bought it, so... <laughs> <laughs> I love what I do. I'm one of these people that actually enjoys coming into work every day and seeing what's coming through the door. You never know what's going to arrive. Today, James and his fiance, handbag expert Claudia, have flown to Ibiza to appraise their clients' items. Starting with Andy and Zena, who are looking to sell a collection of designer bags, two watches and a ring. I think they're trying to raise about £10,000. We can never tell by the images, but we've come a long way, so let's be hopeful that there is something there to look at. Otherwise, um, we're going to spend a couple of days by the pool and go back to England with uh, empty handed, which is not what we want. <laughs> Isn't it? Mm. Those lemons are huge. Hiya! How are you doing? Right? How are you? Good, you? Right? Just through here, we'll nice it down. Great. Got little bits and bobs for yeah. you. We'll have a few bits and bobs. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Perhaps start off with this one. See what yeah, you can think. I open it? Of course you can. Oh, this is lovely. Mm. Yeah, it's new, you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, How really old is it? Brand new. How long have you had it? It's a couple of years old, it's isn't it? Years. It's in really nice nick. It's got the box and the dust cover. It doesn't look like it's been worn at all, really. No, it's important when you've got everything, like the original package yeah. in, it just makes it more valuable, doesn't it? Taking Claudia to Ibiza was a no-brainer. She needed to see those bags in the flesh. And let's face it, she knows a lot more than I do about bags. This one, um, the other one we've got here. There's a little bit of ink on the inside, tiny little bit of ink mark. Yeah. Would that come out? Well, think. usually it doesn't really come out. So, and you've got some jewellery as well? Yes, um, I've got a little couple of watches that I've perhaps not worn as much as I should. It's got everything with it. It's got all the box and papers, yeah. yeah. It's uh, lovely, and isn't it? And the condition's it? quite good, actually. I mean, the secondary market for Rolex is really strong. So when did you buy this one? Um, I bought that, I think it was about four years ago. What, new? A new, brand new, yeah. The secondary market isn't yeah. the same as the Rolex. But yeah, yeah. Because you've got the box and papers, you know, I think they're probably still, there'll be someone out there yeah. for that. So that's quite good. Nice. What about the I little... Mean, uh, well, I'm, I'm sort of hoping it's a banker. A little investment from a few years before. Yeah, it's a really, it's a good colour and it's really clean as well. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah, so just over four carats. It's set in white gold, so that's another plus. Yeah, it's a really good buy. I think you've oh, done please, really well to please. buy that. So I'm hoping to raise 10,000 around that. Right. In my heart, I think the ring's going to pull me out of it. We'll go back, do a bit of work on them, and yeah. we'll come back to you if that's all right. Okay, no problem. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thanks thank for you your so time. Speak to you soon. James's face and reaction yeah. kind of says it all. I think he would be in a bit. A bit, and he um, loved the ring, about didn't it. He was he trying to play it down it. a little bit, whereas I could see in his face he was having it proper, having it, wasn't he? Yeah. There are some items there that are very saleable, but there are some items there that probably are going to be fairly low end. So we need to go back, do some sums, and see if we can work something out. There's more to be done, and another client still to see in Ibiza. So for now, Andy and Zena will have to wait for James and Claudia's assessment. <laughs> Pawn shop, Lawrence specialises in collectibles. Star Wars storyboards. We, we're talking about original film storyboards. Now, they can be worth a lot of money. If you've got page numbers, then it's com... Yeah, it's comics. That wouldn't be for us, unfortunately. Today, retired businessman Lord Tim is dropping his signed boxing belt into the Weybridge branch for appraisal. Hello, I'm Lawrence. Yes, Lawrence, Lord Tim. Oh, right, brilliant. You're expecting me. 
This is the beast. A beast it is, isn't it? Let's have a look at it. It's a bit bigger than I expected. Oh, I mean, what an item. That is incredible. You got any paperwork with it? Yes. OK. From the Las Vegas retail outlet. Obviously, the, the thing, when we've got multiple signatures, there's only one way of actually coming to a value, and that's to actually go for the autograph that's yes. got the most value. I mean, yep. obviously, you know yes. which is the, the number one top of the heat. Indeed. And it's got to be the one down here. Yes. Muhammad Ali. Ali. And you paid about sort of two, two and a half when you converted yes, it. Yes, but eight years ago, plus freight. Yeah. Well, good, I'll leave it with you and... Uh... Yeah, I'll give you a call. Thanks. See you, Lord Tim. Bye-bye. Look forward to hearing from you. The only signature I'm really worried about is the Muhammad Ali, which is the prime one. There was a um, FBI sting a few years ago uh, called Operation Ballpen, where they actually caught a guy that actually knocked out millions of pounds worth of Ali's signatures. There's a lot of forgeries out there, so we have to be very careful on this one. It's early morning in Ibiza, and James is on his way to his favourite kind of asset appraisal. When it comes to big ticket items, I need to go and see them in the flesh. I'm the boss, if I need to go, I will. Businessman Paul has his eye on a bigger boat, so he's hoping to sell his current one for £75,000. I'm feeling very positive. I think uh, James will be our man. This for us could be potentially a big deal. There's €100,000, a lot of money. Me and Boats, you know, we're not a happy marriage by any stretch of the imagination, but today I've had a sort of uh, a small, uh, full English breakfast and I'm hoping that it's going to stay within me. Hi, mate. Morning, James. How are you doing? Nice, nice boat. to meet you. I'm giving it a bit of clean up. Yeah, just a bit of a touch up before you arrive. When I first walked down the jetty and I saw it, I thought, wow, this is amazing. I had no idea of the scale of the thing. Welcome aboard, just more fun. Lovely. Have a look round. Big sun pad, that's where the fun happens. Right, let's take a look downstairs then, James. Oh, lovely. Oh, well, this is done up. This is nice, isn't it? Well, to be honest, this downstairs area has hardly been used. We're in Ibiza, right. it's all about the being up on deck out oh, in the sun. Oh, I was say, it looks brand new down here. Let's uh, take it for a spin. I'm looking forward to this, getting out on the open seas. You know, it's like second nature to me, really. Right, you're hanging on. Oh, yes. All right. She's got some grunt, isn't she? It's been looked after properly, I take it. I mean, the engines get serviced regularly. The boat's out of the water, every window, all the bills are there. Everything's above board in this boat. Do you want to have a drive in? Yeah. How do I steer it? Just turn the wheel. Well, that's it, is it? Forward for fast, back for slow, yeah? Yeah. Lovely, all right. Yeah, I'm loving it now. She does turn nicely, doesn't she? Turns on a sixpence. It does, doesn't it? Oh, yes. And just ease back a touch. Ease back. Ease back. Hey, <laughs> hey. I was just getting into my stride and Paul was looking a little bit edgy. Straighten her up back this way. Yeah. Because I don't know if you haven't noticed, but there's rocks over there. All right, yeah. There's a... All I kept hearing from Paul was ease off a little bit and I wasn't quite sure what he meant by that. Got it all under control, Paul, don't worry. That's David Beckham's house. Him and Posh living over here. I don't get out enough, mate. Last celebrity I saw was Nicholas Parsons. <laughs> That was uh, a really, really lovely day out there, mate, to be honest with you, and it uh, seems to all go tickety-boo. So you're looking for...? Uh, we're looking to get 100,000 euros. That equates to what's just over 70 grand, is it? 73? 70, 75,000 sterling, I would guess, yeah. Yeah, well, look, I'm going to get back and do some uh, sums and make some calls and see what we can do. Yep. Thanks for today. It's no a, problem. It's been a great, great day. Out. Cheers, mate. See you. Paul's bigger boat depends on whether James can find a buyer with almost £75,000 to spare. 
In the UK, Lawrence is heading out to seek a second opinion on Lord Tim's signed boxing belt. I've got a few reservations. I mean, the certificates of authenticity really bother me. I mean, they're really flowery, really hairy fairy. I'd expect to see at least a hologram with a number on the certificate and on the actual item. He's taking it to autograph expert Mark. Hi, Mark, how are you? Hi, Lawrence, how are you doing? I'm all right. I think that concerns me, and that's why I brought it to you, is how small the Arlie signature doesn't look right. Just standing here, mm. I can confirm to you each one of these signatures are not authentic. Every single one of them. There's nothing right about this. What makes you say this isn't right? Jamie, you got that picture there of, of Duran and Leonard? Thanks, mate. Lovely. But let me just show you, look. There's supposed to be Leonard's signature here. Yeah. There's, an, there's an authentic one. See where he has a little smiley yeah. face? It's not even close, is terrible it? Terrible effort. And here's the Roberto Duran autograph there. Not anything like it, is it a T? Again. Everything's wrong about it. Whatsoever. So my gut feeling was good then. These belts, unfortunately now, are mass produced all over the world. If someone bought that into me now and paid me to authenticate that, Lawrence, I would say, and I know I'm not going to be wrong, yeah. each one of those are done in the same hand. And it's not even a good replica belt. Yeah. That's one of the cheaper ones. Brilliant. Hopefully I'll bring you the Holy Grail Lovely. next time. I'll see you soon, eh? See you soon, mate. Look Sorry, after mate. yourself. Bye. Headquarters in Hatton Garden, James has returned from Ibiza. Josephine. What's up? You alright? Yeah, was it nice? Oh, it was lovely, yeah. Took a boat out for a day, that was all good. Looked at some lovely jewellery, beautiful diamond ring. So I'm hopeful we might be able to do something with that. What were you like on the boat? I was actually alright this time. I was alright. I was, was flying it? around all over the place. So it's sailboats that you don't like. Sailboats are sailboats, more yeah. like this. Big boats are like that, aren't they? Quite yeah. joggy. I don't know about that. They are a bit joggy. Very nice. You've got a little bit of a suntan. You think so? A little bit. I wash your Either that does. or you've got a touch of jaundice. Yeah. <laughs> Handbag expert Claudia is on a research mission to find out more about Thomasin's purse. I'm taking the purse to Ian today because it's an antique and uh, it's not my field. I think he'll know a lot more about it and uh, it'll be interesting to see what he thinks of it. Hello. Hello. Hi. Good to see you. Thank you. How are you? How are you? I'm good. Wow, wow look at you. Wow. You've been you look amazing. Nice you. Oh, you look gorgeous. You all right? Yes, busy. God. I'm going to have to wear blinkers here. I just <laughs> want to look at everything. <laughs> right, shall I show you the little yes, purse? I must see what this is. I'm actually about. quite excited with, uh, with your reaction, hopefully. OK. <laughs> oh, it's very pretty. Wow. It's very pretty. Isn't it? I've never seen one of these before. Gilded metal. Gilded metal. This enamel work, look at that. I know, I mean, that's what I love about stunning. it. Stunning. What sort of class of person would you think used that type of purse? Middle to upper class. Middle to upper. Yeah, because yeah. they would have the money to do it. These, mm. these would have been quite expensive in their time. You yeah. Know. Uh, they wouldn't and when are we thinking? When, when are we looking at? What Victorian. Sort of yeah. Late okay. Victorian. They were made for ladies who would go out in the evening yeah. to a ball yeah. or a lovely dinner and they just put the necessities in there. I wouldn't even be able to fit my lipstick in that. <laughs> I mean, it's tiny. They weren't used for everyday handbags, mm. you know. Yeah. You'd put a vinaigrette in there, yeah. you know, a little vinaigrette and you're sitting on a coach going somewhere and there's such a pong in the place, you take out your vinaigrette and... <laughs> 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 you dirty people <laughs> in, the co in the carriage, you know. Use the stink. <laughs> So do people still buy these items? Oh, yes. We have they? collectors. So they are collectible yes, items then? absolutely. OK, it's been around, the enamel is slightly damaged, it needs a bit of attention, mm. it could do with a re-guild, and it would look amazing. Amazing. But you need to spend a lot of money yeah, to, in order to, get to it. do it. No. And that sometimes doesn't warrant no. you spending the money on it. 
Do you know what? I feel like buying it myself now. Well, my darling, you buy it, but remember, your lipstick will not fit in it. <laughs> well, you know, That's it's brilliant. a lovely place, and thank yeah. you for bringing it and letting oh, me have the listen, pleasure of looking so at it. thank you so much for your time. You know, I really it's, appreciate it. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Okay. It was definitely worth my while making the trip to come over because he's given me so much info about the item, uh, which will help me with now appraising it. It's now up to Claudia to come up with a figure to offer Thomas in. In Weybridge, Lawrence is preparing to give owner Lord Tim the news about his boxing belt. I must admit, I'm a little bit nervous. I'm not usually, because obviously business is business, but some people actually sort of, you know, get to you a little bit. And he's got to me. I think he's a lovely guy. And actually, I can actually feel my heart going a little bit now, so... Uh... I really could do with the cash for this because, uh, of course, I'm trying to buy a minibus. I've got one on offer in, in the hopes that the uh, deals will go through today, but we must wait and see. Hello, Lord Tim, how are you? Hello, I'm very well yourself. I'm good. Come through, we'll go in the office. There's your seat for yourself. Thank you. So it's taken so long, but obviously we've got to make sure we got it right. Of course. So this was about the three and a half, three thousand mark. Yes. Mm. But that was dollars. That was dollars. So about two thousand pounds. And we... eight years ago. Now, the problem is with boxing memorabilia, it's one of the most difficult ones to actually authenticate. So it is very difficult to actually come up with a value. So anyway, I took it down to Mark, yep. um, and he was very quickly came to a decision on it. Um, and unfortunately, it's not right. Really? I'll be quite straight with you. The actual signatures have been done in the same hand. Mm -hmm. Quite often what they'll do is they'll get something like this, have two or three signatures that are actually correct, and the rest aren't. So these certificates really are worthless? Well, yes. What I'd expect to see is a hologram yeah. on here with a number. Yeah. Which then have a, something on the actual belt that matches it. The other problem you've got with the certificate is there's no address. No. If you're not happy, who to get back to? There's nothing never thought of that. there no. at all, no. which is very strange. Well, I'm grateful stayed. for the work you've done on it. I'm not happy about it, but I'd rather know the yeah. truth. Yeah. Sorry, Lord Tim. Well, it's been a great pleasure well, to meet you. Well, it's been a great you. pleasure meeting you. And, really uh, not happy about the outcome, but like no. I say, that's all we're here to do to come to no. the truth, really. Cheers, Lord Tim. Thank you. I know there are a lot of fake boxing signatures around. I'm not too disappointed. It'll go back on the wall. Um, Lady C won't be too pleased because she really wanted to um, vacate some wall. And I could have done with the money towards this minibus, but it's not the end of the world. So lift it up. You buy something, you think you've got an investment, and you now found your investment is worth nothing. How would you feel? In Hatton Garden, up to 30% of the day-to-day -day business is dealing with designer handbags. Can we go home early today? <laughs> oh, well, I don't we might as well shut up now. No, I can't shut up full stop. No, you can't do that. It's a shame Chanel don't do a muzzle, isn't it? <laughs> oh, my God. What? Resident handbag expert Claudia is ready to make an offer on the small antique purse belonging to animal lover Thomasin. It's quite interesting um, what I've learned about it. I think she's going to be quite surprised with what uh, news I'm going to give her about the purse because she really didn't know anything about it. In Cheshire, Thomasin is hoping there's enough in the purse to help her set up a designer dog collar business. I'm just feeling excited, really. I just like to find out because I've, I've wondered for years whether it is worth anything. The money would go towards um, building website for the business and advertising for the new business. Hello. Hi, is that Thomasin? Yes, it is. Hello, it's Cloudy. Are you nervous? Uh, yeah, well, I'm kind of just <laughs> excited, to be honest. Are you? <laughs> 
Okay, well, we've never been presented with an item like this, and it's so, so cute. I mean, I, I didn't expect it to be so little when it came through the post. No, well, everybody kept calling it a handbag. Um, yeah. I was like, no, it's a purse. It's a purse, yeah. <laughs> I've done some research on it. Mm -hmm. It's from the 1890s to oh. the 1920s, mm -hmm. and it's French. To the value of it, because it's obviously, you know, damaged with the chain and also the enamel's chipped, etc. Mm -hmm. It would have had more value had it been, mm -hmm. you know, in, in better condition. We are happy to make you an offer because I think it's an item that we'd love to get repaired and sort mm -hmm. of, um, you know, make Spruce it, it up, bring look, it back to yeah, its, uh, exactly. as it should be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and with that, we would like to make you an offer of two hundred pounds. Uh-huh. Well, that's good. Yeah? <laughs> it's better than nothing, yeah? <laughs> oh, right, OK. Anything is better than nothing, really. Oh, so, yeah. good. So you're that's pleased good, with yeah. that? I'm not going to okay. give up the day job just yet, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for sending it in to us. That's OK. And, um, I shall speak to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. A little bit more money to um, you know, get, get the business up and running. Every, everything helps, so yeah, it's good. I'd like to get it all repaired and all regilded and see what, you know, see how shiny and, you know, even prettier it will look. I might even keep it myself. <laughs> Guess how much my purse was worth, Alfred? It was worth £200 to go towards our new business that you can model for me. <laughs> Over in Ibiza, businessman Paul is waiting to hear if James has found a buyer willing to pay £75,000 for a quick sale on his speedboat. I feel a bit uh, anxious, a bit of curiosity as well. See whether James can uh, bring home the bacon, so to speak. Um, be interesting to hear what he's got to say. This boat is an absolutely phenomenal bit of kit. It went like doodar off a chrome shovel. Well maintained, well looked after. 100,000 euros, I don't think anyone could ask for a better boat. We've uh, had it for a number of days and we've made some calls. We've got an answer for Paul and uh, I'm gonna give him a call and see where we're at. Hello? Paul? Hi, uh, James. Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, mate. How you doing? Is it still sunny out there or? It's a beautiful day here in Ibiza. We were at the Barcelona boat show over the weekend uh, looking at a lot of big, big shiny new toys. And, really? Uh, we're very excited. Uh, we need to get rid of this boat. No, it's got the boat has got a lot of uh, a lot going for it. There's no doubt about it. I mean, condition-wise, I can't fault it. I think you've got something really, really worth the money uh, in respect of the hundred thousand euros. We've only had a few days on it, and it's uh, as you can appreciate, it's not uh, an easy thing to sell instantly. Uh, so as as yet. Uh, uh, I haven't got a buyer at the moment. Yeah. Well, well we're going to keep working with it. Good man, good um, man. We would uh, love to keep marketing, marketing the boat. If that's all right. OK, yeah, no, uh, do your best, James. I've got uh, the utmost faith in you and your ability. I've got brokers that would be interested in sending people out there, potential buyers. And we'll try and get this thing away. I, I think it's fantastic, I really do. OK, cheers and James. Thanks cheers, for your help. Paul, thanks. Bye. Bye. Selling a boat is very, very hard work. Uh, it's a specialist piece of kit. Feeling a little nervous, but uh, I'm sure James will find us a buyer. I was a little bit disappointed having to tell Paul that we hadn't quite got the deal done, but we're still working with it, and hopefully we can definitely bring someone to the table. Zena and Andy are also waiting on a phone call. They're hoping their items are worth at least £10,000. I'm quietly confident to get the, the money that I'm looking for. I really want to put money into this film. The item that I think is my banker, is, I've said all along, is the ring. I'm just hoping that James comes up with the goods and gives me the 10 grand that I need. Unfortunately, some of the, uh, the items need a bit of work, um, which is always an issue with us when we're selling these pieces on. So there's all that to consider. We've got some answers for him. I'm hoping it's going to be uh, what he wants to hear. So I'm just going to give him a call and see how we get on. I'd be gutted if the little rat rings me and says he don't want to pay for the money for it. Yeah. 
Yes, James. How are you, Andy? You all right, mate? Sal, mate. How are you? Good, good. OK, look, well, we've done some work, as you know. The Rolex, as I said when we met, really desirable. Uh, there yeah. is some issues with the condition, although it's got box and papers. Uh, yeah, it's know, old. It's old, it needs a service. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Chopard watch. The secondary market for Chopard is not flat, but it's uh, it's quite yeah. specialised. It's not as buoyant. Yeah. That's the issues with the watches. Now, the, the bags are quite interesting. Claudia's done some work on those, and uh, the little wire cell, quite desirable. The uh, Louis Vuitton, uh, there were some pen marks, which is difficult for us. That would be a little bit of a risk on our part, but we we would be willing to take that punt, I think. OK, OK, fair enough. Now, the, the, the ring that you've got, where, how long ago did you get hold of that ring? I got that about four years ago, and I sat on it, to be honest. Right, OK, all right. Well, look, I'll tell you what, we've done some sums. Yeah. I've got a figure for you for the... as a package, the whole lot. OK. And it's... 45 grand. How much? 45. Really? Yes, mate. Yeah. Yes, son. <laughs> yes. Listen, I knew it was the ring, wasn't it? To be fair to you, yeah, it's the ring. I think you've done really well. Yes. <laughs> the colour and the clarity and the size. I mean, it's yeah. a beautiful thing, and I think you've done tremendously. You're, you're pretty straight face and poker face, but I saw your little eyes twinkling. You did, didn't you? You, you, know, you spotted it. Your eyes are like, <laughs> wait a minute, what have we got here? Well, it really is a... A proper little Bobby Dazzler, that one, to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, I'm made up. I'm absolutely made up. So the 45 grand now, is that going to be piled into the movie or are you going to take Xena out for a bite to eat or at oh. least a burger? Yeah, definitely going to spoil it somewhere, a little cheap and cheerful, <laughs> all you can eat. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> they don't do a carvery over here, do they? <laughs> I'll put it all in an email, send it over to you, and we'll arrange for you to ship it over or get it over here somehow and we'll get the deal done. OK, just don't Love lose it. it. No. Nope. All right, son. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Hello. mate. See you Bye. soon. Bye. Yes. Zena! Zena! Yeah? Come here, listen, never guess what. Listen, 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 this up. Guess how much so we know what we're expecting, what we wanted. How much? 45 grand. Oh, are for you everything. joking? No, for everything, no, for everything. Word. 45 you grand, no. Oh my god. Are you shopping then? Are you joking? No. It was really good to deliver him. Uh, that sort of figure because quite often you're disappointing people and because he's such a lovely fella and I suppose because we've met his wife and his family and his kids it all makes it a little bit more personal. 45 grand's life-changing really. It's been brilliant. It's amazing. Can you please Can you please? Can you please? Can you get some toys? Can you get some new toys?